I have taken down a cover up here already so that was two eight millimeter bolts on either side just a little plastic cover and to <coughs> sorry to remove the drive belt you want a 15 millimeter onto the tensioner there and press down and that releases the tension to remove the drive belt to uh, gain access to the time belt area you're gonna have to remove the coolant expansion tank it's held down by this clip at the side it's held down by this clip here at the side so from the top what you will need to do is uh, put pressure on either side to separate and uh, it will move up from this clip here slots down over that so if you put a small flat screwdriver on either side of that keep the pressure outwards which is in towards the uh, steering wheel will say in towards the bulkhead um, you will uh, release the pressure and then you lift up there's also a 10 millimeter holding it on holding it on there which you remove from right there so next will be the uh, power steering reservoir that's got to come up so we have a 10 mil bolt here holding it down and then we have these uh, push-in rubber grommets that uh, slip up out of it now that I have the uh, 10 mil bolt lifted from here I am going to remove this reservoir on one side I'm going to disconnect it so I backed off this clip here which uh, holds on this hose I've used my brake hose clamp to uh, pinch in on that side and what I will do is I'm going to blank off the other side so I have met up this little piece here that will slip on that end and it's blocked on this side I just have a blocked with a bolt so any any hose that fits onto the end you can use to uh, to just clamp it that can be pushed out of the way and you will have a lot more access then. I now have the reservoir out of the way. This is the blanker I used on this side. And I then just put a bolt on this side. I first had clamped and then after I had the reservoir disconnected, I just put the right size bolt to blank it off that side. I then took out the two 10 millimeter cover bolts there I now have access to the engine mountain so it will be that one that one down there down there we will be removing we are now on the underside of the vehicle um, as you can see that's the crankshaft pulley bolt there once that's removed you're going to have to replace the seal they always leak once uh, they leak in here once the crankshaft pulley comes off uh, we'll be removing this idler there's a 10 mil bolt there for the uh, underside of the timing cover and then you have your water pump for what looks to be 10 mils as well holding it on so that is it after we remove all of them items it will free up access to the wet belt which is uh, encased by this aluminium casing next thing now is the engine mount removal so It's 15 millimeters on these outside ones and it's uh, 18 millimeters on the inside. Also, I removed, backed off this 8 millimeter bolt here, which attaches its bracket to make it easier to pull back for when I want to take this uh, engine mountain up. There is another 10 mil in there. Um, I've gone ahead and removed the bottom. 10 mil on this cover so this is ready to come out once I have that last one taken out.
when doing any time belt jobs be sure to note that if you have any concerns if you are unsure about something uh, it's time to back away from it you do not want to be gambling if you're doing a time and belt uh, it is a job that can uh, can leave an engine in uh, in tatters if you get it wrong so if you have somebody to help you who is qualified or is very familiar with with time and belt setups i would recommend doing that um, you can certainly do a lot before you um, need to touch the timing belt so you can strip and remove uh, all these components that I'm showing you now. But once you get to the wet belt and the timing belt area, and this goes for any car that you're working on, um, be sure that you have somebody with you that knows what they're doing um, or else you bring it to a workshop to get it done. Um, if you were unsure um, and it's your first time and you're you're um, not familiar with engines I would highly recommend that you would leave this job for somebody else you don't want to risk um, messing your engine up we now have access to the timer belt on this side I've removed the cover the engine mountain is removed I also removed the inner part of the engine mountain which is uh, four 10 millimeter bolts I then uh, removed the water pump pulley which is another four 10, milli 10 millimeter bolts down there. And so we now can see the timing belt and we now have clear access to the water pump. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the intercooler. So disconnect in here, you'd be taking it off here, securing brackets there and back here. So we'll be gaining access to the rocker cover because that will come, be coming up as well and there is a uh, timing tool that gets pushed into the back of the cam after you remove the rocker cover so first the intercooler pipes and then we'll be going for any uh, any other items that are attaching to the to rocker cover to make access to that once you have the plastic intercooler uh, cover taken up you will see four eight millimeter bolts holding down the front of the intercooler intercooler is removed out of the way now I've disconnected these pipes here then two clips so the loom that was running across here you're gonna have to can disconnect them from the pump from the rail and so on and uh, all the different sensors and I just pulled it back and hooked it up here so it gives you free access to the rocker cover then it's eight millimeter bolts along here I have this disconnected this sensor and that slung up out of the way and I have that bracket disconnected there which is two eight millimeters as well so the only thing holding this down now is those one two three three more eight mil bolts and then at the back here i have a clip and a hose that i need to remove rocker cover is now up out of the way <coughs> seal is removed make sure that you uh, pay close attention to the seal on the rocker cover and you don't damage it it can get stuck on so be very careful along them lines i now can see at the back just there that is where the locking tool goes in at the back and this is the um, special tools kit so we'll be using this to hold the camshaft there's also locking pins and this tool here so <coughs> these special tools are required to uh, to time up this as you can see there the uh, locking tool for the rear of the cam there's a web in the back here and this when it's at top dead center on number one slides in in that it is uh, like a machine fit so it won't pop in until it's exactly in location. 
Okay, so it's at, <coughs> it's at this stage that I propped the engine um, from the top. I had it propped from the bottom, taken off the uh, engine mount and so on. But now I'm using this uh, gearbox engine crane support. If you um, don't have these tools, which a lot of people won't, what I would suggest is you remove the starter um, and whatever other components underneath. You make sure you get all them done first. I have the luxury of having the lift and this, so I can uh, go about stripping the top. I'm going to rise it up. I'm going to remove the starter. I've now disconnected the battery. And uh, in this instance, I'm taking off the alternator as well. So we now have it up in the air and um, as you can see the front of the engine here the starter the reason why we take the starter off is there is a locking tool that goes in behind here to lock the flywheel uh, and it's important you use all the locking tools uh, in this instance and <clears throat> secondly i will be removing the alternator on this one and um, the alternator is also making noise as you can hear there To remove the starter, you want to take these two nuts off the back here, 13 and a 10, and remove this block unit. And then there's three bolts holding it on and they're all 13. The starter is removed and the flywheel locking tool is in place, as you can see there. And then up here is the uh, locking pin for the web of the crankshaft. That's in place, so we're all set up and uh, ready to remove the timing belt now. I also have the crankshaft pulley removed there. The timing belt is now removed. I took off the cam pulley as well, <coughs> which I'll show you the tool I used to, uh, to remove that in a moment. I've also taken off the uh, pulley on the pump down here, which is three bolts, and then there is a bit of sealer that holds it on. Just need to pry it off. So this was the tool that sits in sits in like that, locks behind it, and then you tighten this in and it pulls it out. It's a special tool for removing those. Because there's a tapered a tapered edge on that. So this is the tool I used to remove the actual bolt they sit in there locks it and then you can remove these for this particular job you are going to need a lot of special tools um, the likes of that you can possibly get away without using by using other ways to to lock that but with the timing gear you can't really get around it you will need the peg that uh, hits off the lobe of the crankshaft you will need the um the plate at the back which locks the top uh camshaft and uh the third one being the flywheel locker potentially you could get away with but um it is definitely worthwhile having to keep it in keep it in position so overall there is a lot of special tools required for this particular job but uh to do it right and to make sure the timing is 100 percent these are the um these are the things you need to do so now that we have got uh all that information out of the way we can go ahead with the job again the next thing on the list is to remove this plate here held on by some 10 millimeter bolts uh sorry held on by some eight millimeter bolts and uh, once we have this plate removed, we will gain access to the bottom aluminium housing, which uh, encases the uh, wet belt. So once we have the aluminium housing on the bottom removed, we will have access to the wet belt. Um, at any particular stage, you can choose to do the water pump. Um, I'm going to do it after I have the timing sorted out. So I have the plate now taken off at the top. And I'm going ahead removing all these bolts from the casing.
I've now got the aluminium casing removed and at this point is where I would be getting ready to fit the wet belt. But in this instance, I have found that there's actually a chain behind it. So fortunately, I won't have to replace it. Unfortunately, is I've wasted a load of time. The information I got from the Ford dealership was that there was a wet belt in it. Uh, any Transit Connect we've done previously has had a wet belt, but this one here has a chain. So, if you are doing the wet belt, you now know that this is the area that you need to be in, uh, and these would be the components that you would be replacing. Um, I won't be doing it on this one, I'll actually be fitting it back together with new seals and uh, continuing on from there. water pump is now back up in position that's the new water pump so these are all 8 mil except for one 10 mil that's there uh, make sure you clean around the surface good before you put the new water pump in what I'm currently doing is I've cleaned this area up where the aluminium housing will be going back on so once you remove these seals you'll need to replace them again so that's the that's the big one that sits around the pump and then this is the smaller one that sits around the crank pulley so make sure you get them if you are doing this job because they will leak especially this crank one old seal taken out new seal knocked back in and I've done that by just using a socket the exact size and using my dead blow and knocking it in I have the aluminium lower case now fitted back on, all tightened up. I've uh, started to fit this back on now. I've also the uh, seal fitted down here. Now that seal comes with this plastic ring that sits around it, which is meant to push off as you push it in. Um, they can be quite difficult and they have a tendency in some cases to try and ball up so be very careful all it takes is one wrong um push on those and you'll uh you'll ruin the seal so take your time and make sure that uh all of it is going on and that none of it is uh is bunching up on you also with with the the likes of this job it is very much a methodical job. I know all of these clips are compressed and shortened down and it seems like it's happening really fast, but uh, you do need to take your time. Like that that seal goes on wrong, you have an oil leak and you have to strip the whole thing down again. Same with the bottom crank one. You fit that on wrong, again, oil leak all over, job all over again. Um, well in that instance you take off the bottom crank pulley and, and fit a new one but water pump the same when you're fitting the gasket make sure that it's nice and clean around all the area and you have no dirt and then lastly like you have all them components to worry about and then you have to make sure that the timing stays right so take your time better to do something right the first time and take a little bit longer rather than rushing through it and ending up having to do the job again there is nothing worse than having a job all together and finding out that there's a leak in a water pump or an oil leak um, or even that the timing is out so my advice if you do take this job on allow yourself enough time to do it uh, do not rush it make sure that you take each stage as as it is and um, that way you have the best chance of getting a, a good result that you're happy with when you do start up your engine it'll be nice and dry and running right timing belt is now on all tensioned up you have to move this tensioner anti-clockwise until this peg goes into the middle and make sure that all your marks are still lined up when the crank pulley was going on I had an old mark and lined it up I also had the back and plate here 
still in position of course and uh, made sure that nothing nothing has moved so uh, recap water pump done time and belt done new seals put in on the uh, crankshaft lower side and uh, behind the injection pump so we are now ready just to keep fitting back uh, all the rest of the components so you're pretty much following the procedure in the reverse order that that um, that was done so whatever way you stripped it just follow back the opposite direction now it's time to remove the flywheel locker so this is the tool here it locks in against the teeth I'll be loosening these two taking that out I'll be putting in the crankshaft pulley remember when you're putting this in to have the uh, plate at the top and your lock and pin lobe removed the starter is now back up in place as you can see the next job I'll be doing is putting up the alternator I have the bracket returned it's behind that bracket that the uh, locking pin for the crankshaft is and that is held in by a, a blanker so there's just a bolt that winds out and the pin goes in after that. And this is the new alternator that will be going in now. Alternator, new alternator is back up in place. Two 10 millimeter bolts holding that up. And if you come on this side, there's another 10 millimeter nut holding on the cable and then lastly you have this uh, plug socket that you need to remove up on this side so that's back up in place I'm gonna put on the drive belt now top up the coolant and um, run the vehicle it's all back together now and ready to go everything is now back together checked for leaks uh, in oil and water and no issues there and <coughs> timing is, um, is 100 percent so everything is good uh, and uh, I'll just be bringing this for a road test now I hope you found this video useful uh, if you did please like share comment and subscribe I will be posting more videos to do with this transit connect as I finish the project I also have uh, previously put up a video on the uh, repair of the sills uh, if you want to check that on my channel and um, also I have done uh, a full service on it so I have the oil filter air filter fuel filter chain and um, it's all good to go thanks for watching and I'll uh, catch you next one